Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. My name is Vic Barry. This has all been shot on the Sony ZV-1 and we're kind of really upping the game on this. So if you watch one of the most recent videos, we've had the ultimate vlogging rig and now we're taking this out and about. But the difference is, as opposed to shooting everything in auto, we're shooting it all kind of manual. I'm going to see how the Sony ZV-1 works as an actual travel camera because we're on our vacation. We're on our actual holidays. We're in a place called Glen Arav Forest Park, which is about five and a half hours away from where we live. Thanks to my buddy Stephen Reed, who's got some amazing videos in Northern Ireland, which is where we are, by the way. So I kind of discovered this place in one of his videos. So he said, get here early and it's early. So we're here and we're going to see what the Sony ZV-1 can really do. When it comes to something what you want for a perfect travel camera, what should it be? Essentially, you want something that's small that can possibly fit in a pocket or you can fit it into like a little carry-on bag or knapsack or whatever you've got going on, backpack. And then you want something that's A, going to take video. More importantly as well, it's going to take photos. Now, I know what you're saying, but Vic, you can do all that with a phone, but I really do think that, you know, the look out of a camera, like something like the Sony ZV-1, is great don't get me wrong phones are great super great especially for photos you can get some amazing photos but when it's a camera when it's this size and when it's this good by the way let me know in the comments what you think because i made a little bit of an investment for the sony zv1 and this is a crane m2 which essentially is that uh it's all now on stabilizer a gimbal Gotta say, this place is absolutely deadly, slippy, and so insane. So essentially, we've got like a path that's taken us gimbal, that's taken us down to this waterfall. So we've kind of saw a little bit of it there, but now it's like this is definitely a a one-person path. But what I'm hoping to do as well, remember earlier on we talked about the uh, camera being good. For a travel camera and about taking about taking photos then we're going to see can we get one of these kind of long exposure photos of this waterfall if we don't fall and die on the way down uh, just to see what this kind of ND filter can do and we're not talking about the built-in ND filter by the way I'm soaked we're talking about the uh, the actual ND filter that I put on to the Sony ZV-1 which is a KNF Concept 52 millimeter ND filter and also then it works with the lens adapter for the Sony ZV-1 which you would have seen in the, the last video and if you haven't seen that then uh, click the link at the end of this video or in the description or I'm pretty sure it's going to pop up somewhere that we're about to kind of hit what we set out to see and this is this insane waterfall uh, you can hear it. Let me flip the mic. Yeah, Cameron's pointing at it. Holy hell, look at that. Look at this. Oh man, I'm getting dizzy. So that was absolutely, totally, totally worth it. Absolutely insane. Have I said absolutely enough? That's probably one of the most impressive waterfalls that I've seen, but uh, we're kind of chasing waterfalls over the next couple of days as well. So we'll see what else we can rope out. But with the kind of built-in ND filter combined with the KNF concept, we were able to get that long exposure picture. Kind of hard to, frame it correctly with the gimbal and stuff like that it would have been better on a little tripod but still awesome check it out and 
And the bizarre thing is, once you get done coming out of this woods, there's like this. It's a house. It's something. I know Stephen Reed is watching this. He'd probably drop a comment and explain. Oh, hang on. There is a sign. It is in the middle of the woods. A licensed restaurant. I don't think I'd hike down all the way down here for a cup of tea. This is the place that just keeps on giving. There is another waterfall here. So let's do a high frame rate mode on this one. Let's just kind of stick at a 240 frames per second. Okay. Oh this is, whoa, watch it. It's slipping. It's slipping. Let's, uh, yeah. Let's not die. This is just insane. Yeah. I know the vortex mode where it goes 360 is a gimmick, but it's a cool gimmick. One of the worst things about changing the battery on the Sony ZV-1 when it's on a gimbal is that the whole thing has to be rebalanced again. Not completely, but it is still a little bit of a pain. Now, the thing that's worse than that is the hike out of here. We need to go to the viewpoint trail, I think. Past the cafe, back to the car park. I know I said the Vortex mode can be a little bit cheesy, but we're going somewhere next and probably in the next clip or two that if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you're going to be blown away. I want to see what the Vortex mode is like, but more importantly, how amazing footage that we're going to get out of the Sony ZV-1. So you Game of Thrones fan should recognize this. This is probably one of the most famous things in Northern Ireland, the Dark Hedges. It was in the show for all of like, I don't know, five seconds. It was the King's Road. I forgot my hat. Anyway, so this is it. Now, to summarize, does the Sony ZV-1 make a good travel camera? Without a gimbal, absolutely. With a gimbal, yeah. It's a nice luxury to have just for the sheer hell of it. But this thing has been absolutely faultless. Mm -hmm.